Today we're going to learn how to use almost any computer through understanding the most basic components that go into almost every computer in the world. Hope you'll join. Hello there everyone. I'm super glad you could join us today to uh, begin with our second series in the Loop video series. We're going to be touching on tech literacy in this series and focusing exactly on using a computer in any case, whether it be Mac, Windows, or Linux, and learning the basics that uh, become a part of just average, everyday computer use and how that can get you one step further to being a developer. I hope you'll enjoy this series and Let's get it. I'm actually going to start this series in a weird way by being straightforward with you and telling you using computers is kind of a pain. They always have issues and never work the way they're supposed to. Uh, you do the same thing and sometimes you run into an issue. Uh, there's so many weird names you have to remember. All these acronyms, all these weird long names, these uh, tech companies with names like Google, what is a Google? and there's always more to learn. It's never ending. Why can't I just learn to use a computer and be happy with that? And hopefully with this series, we'll be able to address those problems for you, or at least make it that much easier. So that using the computer should be like using any other tool. You use a camera, you take a picture. You use a light, you have, you use a light bulb, you have light. So to jump into things, Let's go ahead and take a look and really break down what everything in a computer is just so we can understand what the tool we're using is. Before jumping too deeply into things, uh, I want to give you guys some tips on learning these computer skills, learning how to remember all these computer names and learning how to really just master the tool that is the computer. And just like with any other skill, you don't get good in a day. You can follow as many guys as guides as you'd like, but when it comes down to it, it's just like learning any math, any writing skills, anything you can think of. We have to build on top of what we had previously. Kind of like climbing a mountain. When you climb a mountain, usually it could take multiple days. When you climb a mountain, you don't climb the entire thing all at once. You climb bit, by bit by bit. And that's what we're gonna try and do with this series. So to begin, let's go ahead and start with our level one analogy for the most common things you'll find in computers and what function they serve and how we use them. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and start with climbing our first hill, right? So the computer, our main central thing. Through this first level, I'm going to explain the modest beginnings of each of these computer parts just to maybe get that, that amazing little click moment in your head where if we understand the old thing, we'll, completely, we'll be able to completely understand the new thing. So to begin, we have the computer, the main part, the thinking brain, the head of the operations. The computer essentially does one thing. It calculates for us. It computes. So computers actually go all the way back thousands of years to mechanisms that you are literally seeing on your screen right now, which actually date back to Greek times. But the modern computer didn't come up until later. But the important thing is, is the computer is the computer. It does the calculations. It spits the information out. It does all of the hard work. Next up, we have the keyboard. The keyboard uh, used to be what typewriters were. What were typewriters? They were these machines that would uh, react to you pressing a button, which would push a lever and print ink onto a piece of paper. Nowadays, these, well actually, these old keyboards directly affected how our modern keyboards work and are the reasons for keys that we'll see all the time, like the space bar, the backspace, the enter key, and uh, the escape key as well. Following that, we have the mouse. Yes, uh, <laughs> I put an actual mouse there. And the reason was uh, 
the original design for a mouse uh, was originally looking like a mouse. Uh, so it directly got its name from mice and like that we have the mouse. The purpose this mouse serves is to uh, uh, translate an X and Y axis on the screen. What does that mean? When the mouse goes up, the mouse on the screen goes up. It, or it go, when the mouse goes down, the mouse on the screen goes down. Uh, this can uh, usually be seen as a trackpad and on some really old computers you'll find a little nub that will allow you to control the X and Y axis of the mouse. Now I realize I actually skipped over the purpose of the keyboard and really the primary purpose is to press a button and get the computer to actually do something. Now the screen. For our level up one explanation all we need to know is that screens used to be uh, ways for light bulbs to shoot something onto some glass and doing it fast enough for our eyes to be tricked to think that an image is there. Honestly, this technology hasn't changed that drastically since the first TVs or screens back to the 50s or 60s, but uh, nowadays we have these really nice screens. Um, all you have to do and all you have to understand about a screen is that you can look at it and there will be an image there. We have a general understanding of how all these parts work now. Now let's go ahead and ponder on how they work together. Actually, I'll directly explain to you how they all work together. Let's go ahead and start with the first step. The first step that you'll find on literally every computer is the power button. Uh, in some cases, if you really are being a caveman about it, you'll have to press two middle pins together. But if you are in the modern day, all you have to do is click a button and suddenly our entire setup has power. Our computer is being powered, our keyboard is being powered, our mouse is being powered, and our screen is being powered, usually through multiple sources. But uh, with that power button, we have everything activated. Once we have that power button pressed, our computer starts up. That computer won't do anything until we give it inputs. Those inputs will come from our mouse and our keyboard. Once we have uh, those available to use, whatever we do with those will be will send information to the computer. The computer will send that information to the screen and like that we reach our computer use loop. At this point, if you're having trouble understanding any of this, go ahead, pause the video, rewind it. If you're good to keep going, let's go ahead and step onto level two. To begin with level two, we're actually going to go ahead and review each of these parts. And now I'm going to add some more information so that we can take our expertise one level up. So to begin with, let's look at the computer again. What is the computer's purpose? The computer's purpose is to serve our instructions. We can program the computer to take instructions based on certain bits of code that it receives whenever we press a key on the keyboard. So with the computer taking the abstraction level up, we have a chip or a system that will take in numbers, electrical signals, and or ones and zeros, the binary that runs these systems, in order to have them spit information back to us. Following that, uh, taking, up, taking it up a level is the keyboard. The keyboard's actual uh, purpose is to react to us pressing a joint down. Once we click and or press on anything, a, uh, a driver or a board will send a certain and exact electrical signal to the computer which will be interpreted. But uh, in terms of the keyboard, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, terms of abstraction, there's really not many more levels we can go up. On every keyboard, you'll find the same keys. In most cases, usually you'll always find a spacebar, backspace, enter, and escape. Taking the mouse up a level, what we're doing is controlling, again, the X and Y axis while also including other interface buttons. Uh, you can, with mice, usually you'll find either wired or laser-based technologies 
where you, uh, my laser-based mice, where the main premise of the te where the main driver of the technology is either a a uh, laser that's uh, predicting the movement of a uh, of the mouse or a ball that actually tracks that for us. And you will most likely never use a mouse like that because uh, the standards have completely changed and most mice nowadays are what are considered optical. Taking the screen a step up, uh, jumping a, a level deeper into the understanding, the way screens actually uh, create that image I was talking about is by sending thousands uh, light at uh, thousands of a second from left to right on our screen, on any screen, but this only applies to what are known as cathode tube uh, TVs. These old TVs would have these massive light bulbs that would only serve the purpose of sending the signal, usually black and white, or like in the case of binary, ones and zeros, to tell whether or not to turn uh, the light on while it is passing over the screen one line at a time and doing it all fast enough for an image to be tricked into our eyes. Modern day screens uh, just render all the pixels at once. Well, not necessarily. You, it's practically the same process with TVs, while with monitors, computer monitors, you'll find that each pixel is individually controlled instead of a general area being shot with light. So to bring this all together, Again, our computer will be turned on through the power button. This will allow for it to in, uh, take inputs and outputs through electrical signals that come directly from the keyboard and the mice. Uh, with the mice, uh, you will usually find either Bluetooth or wired connections sending that electrical signal. Same thing goes for the keyboards. Now, when we send this information, which is sent in what's usually byte codes or binary, uh, our computer responds. It computes the instructions and again spits out uh, uh, things on our screen and accordingly changes the pixels on the screen telling the color, the position, uh, and the amount of brightness whenever we make those changes. So finally let's go ahead and review these and for level three I'm just going to go ahead and run through an explanation of the computer here, I actually want you guys to actively go and research through Google. This will be the most useful skill as a computer user. This will be the most useful skill as a developer in the future. Just understanding how to use one of the biggest tools on the internet, which is one of the largest tools on computers. So let's go ahead and jump right into explanation number three. To begin, we have our computer. Our computer processes or computes binary for us. That binary, uh, comes into action when we power it on and it starts calculating our operating system. Even before we're using the computer, it runs thousands of calculations we aren't even aware of. And once that process is done, our operating system loads up and tells the screen what interface we'll be working with. Once that interface is visible to us, usually we can interact through either a mouse or on older computers that use terminals which means they'll only have text to edit, uh, you will always have a keyboard. On every keyboard, you'll always have the escape key, backwards, enter, and usually you'll find a numpad as well with some basic function keys. This keyboard will go ahead and send data to the computer to again interpret it all uh, based on an operating system level, then to a lower level that has to do with the binary. Finally, this uh, renders an image which communicates with the operating system to send to the screen so that finally we can move our mouse. Isn't it fun seeing the, <laughs> the entire process of a computer? I'm, I'm sure it's a, a great time. So that's pr our primary explanation of basic computers. Next week we'll actually go ahead and jump into the parts that we'll find in every computer and what it takes to actually build one on your, on your own. I hope you'll join us next time, and until then, have a nice day.